Day 3. Preparation for war. Sorry I haven't continued recounting my experience in a while. I've been busy with things I can't talk about on here. What I can say though is that things have been getting weird again. And it's not good. Day 3 of this hell began when I woke up at around 6am. The events of the previous day left me with a restless sleep. Demons haunted my dreams. Tempted me to come outside to visit them even. However, one of these demons that stalked my dreams was not one that had ill intent toward me. In fact, he seemed to take a liking to me. Whether it was my curiosity or that my family and I had survived the initial invasion, I didn't know. This dream told me what I needed to do once I fully recovered its contents from the archives of my mind. He first entered my dream as a disembodied voice. I was sitting alone on a bench at one of our town's parks on a warm sunny day, which was in stark contrast to the current reality. A small wooded area was at the center of the park and seemed to be the origin of the voice. The deep, husky voice beckoned me to come closer to the forest edge and I obeyed, as if I were in some sort of trance. When I reached the edge of the forest, the voice continued to direct me towards the center, where I was faced with the great demon himself. Massive and robust, he towered over me at a height of what must have been at least 20 feet. This was the Arc Fiend. I had seen the day prior, eating wendigos as if they were but an appetizer at a grand buffet. Upon seeing me, he shrank down to a height that put him directly at eye level with me. Emotions I could not understand swirled in his blazing, pupilless red eyes. Even though he was now my exact height. The great Arcfiend's appearance remained menacing. The demon extended one of his large, clawed hands for me to shake it, and I did so as not to offend the beast. His voice spoke deep and husky like before. Allow me to introduce myself, human. I am Legion, firstborn and king of Arcfiend's. I've been watching you since your birth. You shall become a worthy ally, just as your father and those before him have been. I could feel myself shaking, not just my body in my dream, but my very soul. What did this mean? My father, an ally of a demon? Am I correct in assuming you are terrified? If I am, that is of no importance. I have come to deliver a warning, human. An evil more ancient than I will be descending upon this world soon. I can assist you in combating this evil, but you must tell me that I have your trust. Legion continued. Y you have my tr trust, I stampered weakly. A look of malcontent crossed Legion's bony face. You will say it with conviction, human. You are toying with forces you cannot yet comprehend. To create this unbreakable bond, you must be certain in your heart, mind, and soul that you cannot follow through. Decide. Courage swelled throughout my very being. I will likely never know where it came from, but it came all the same. You have my trust, I exclaimed. At this, a smile crossed Legion's face, and a ring of brilliant white light surrounded us, 
where we stood and grew closer until it couldn't move without touching one of us. An intense beam of the light shot up, enveloping both of us within it. It is done. We shall meet in the real world tomorrow. Legion announced as he spread his bat-like wings to fly up into the sky and out of my mind. I wanted to deny that the dream would have any true impact on me or my life, but I knew that things wouldn't play out that way. I would be meeting Legion in some capacity today. I pray to God that he wouldn't harm us in any way. I left my room after putting on my uniform that resembles one of an ODST. When I climbed the ladder up to sub-level 1, I saw my mother, brother, and sister being escorted into a circular purple portal which stood about 7 feet tall by other men wearing uniforms that matched mine. They were leaving and I couldn't even get to say goodbye. Yet, I would have a, a modicum of happiness knowing they would be safe from the impending doom that awaited us outside. I searched for my father, and found him speaking with Legion. Obviously, they had some history together, like Legion had mentioned in my dream encounter with him. Legion was again downsized to be my father's height. I was beginning to think that this was his way of showing respect. They were in deep discussion like two old marines recollecting old war stories. Looking back, that's exactly what they were doing. My father said something inaudible to me, to which Legion let out a hearty guffaw. When I walked up and tapped my father on the shoulder, he whipped around and gave me a hug. He wasn't one that often gave hugs, so when he would, I always felt a special kind of warmth. I thought you said they wouldn't be here until tomorrow, I said to my father, while gesturing the many soldiers doing various tasks around us. I know, but once I explained how dire our situation had become, command had no other choice besides immediate deployment, my father responded professionally. I took a good look around. There had to be at least 50 or more soldiers on this floor alone, and I knew full and well that there had to be many more on the levels below. Some of the soldiers were men, but others were not. They weren't demons either. Where had they come from? As I asked myself this, two alien looking creatures stepped forward. Strangely, they looked a lot like animals you'd find here on Earth. The one on the left looked reptilian, like a giant bipedal lizard with white eyes that had no pupils and jet black scales covering the exposed parts of his body. The second soldier wore a black barrette and somewhat resembled a lobster with a white mustache. Both of them sported the same uniforms as the rest of us, save for Legion, who did not have or had need of one. Who are they? I asked my father, curiously. They are warriors that hail from other worlds, from across the universe. Legion answered as they both reported to someone that looked like their commanding officer and jumped down the ladder to sub-level 2. You might have guessed this by now, but this isn't just a fallout bunker, Ryan. This is an entire base. My father chimed in as he led us to a massive monitor showing over 20 different sublevels below this one with various labels, including the armory below the end of the hallway. This is everything we have to offer here, Legion. Make yourself at home if you need a rest. We built this here because we were able to pinpoint where the next breach would occur. Impeccable, as always, my friend. Legion congratulated my father. You seem tense more than usual. What's wrong? My father asked in a tone of empathy. The red clouds that plague the sky. They worry me. 
Only once in my eons of life have I seen them, and it was not long ago. The eater of worlds descended from it and laid waste to this place. He is coming once again. My other arc fiends have pledged their support in ridding our dimension of this scourge. However, no matter how many we number, we will not have sufficient power to defeat this evil of evils. We must perform a sacrificial ritual to summon the ancient gods to assist us in preventing Ragnarok. Legion stated coldly, What will we sacrifice? I asked. Why else do you believe that I summon the lesser demons, such as those you call Wendigos? They are the sacrificial lambs, and that pleases me. I do not care for them as nutrition, or as fellow demons. This my way of purging the lesser demons from our ranks as well as summoning the ancients. The Legion answered gleefully. He placed his massive hand on my shoulder, and I winced. Its weight was tremendous, even if he was just resting it. Still though, I was glad to have the Arc Fiends on our side. Whatever, or whoever this eater of worlds was, it couldn't be good. How had he been defeated before? The ancient gods? Perhaps those of the Norse, Greek? and Egyptian mythologies? Who can know, except for Legion? Please invite your Archons in. I know how they hate having to share space with demons under them. My father told Legion as he left to take care of other business. Legion's devilish black horns emitted a glow, and twenty or so other Archfiends materialized in the room in front of us. They all had a similar appearance to their king, but were far less impressive. Legion gave them the rundown on what was happening, and they reveled in an opportunity for war. As Legion would later tell me, it was not the Archfiend's duty to prey on innocent humans and souls, but to be the protectors of our dimension in the multiverse. They were far fewer in number than they once were. But, immortality does not mean invulnerability, except in the case of Legion. He was created by God himself to rule over hell until the end of time. Your father and I first met over 20 years ago, when we last breached the barrier between our worlds. It was but a test to see how adequate your defenses were in the case of an event such as the one currently taking place. I took quite a liking to him, and we have kept contact over these years. He is a man of moxie and cunning qualities I appreciate in any being, human, demon, or otherwise. You possess these traits as well, and they shall serve you well, son of Glasgow. Legion told me later that day, this was the recreation of a bond that had transcended time and it felt like getting to know an old friend after years of not seeing each other. The Archfiends were well acquainted with those working on base and were very well on getting to know me as well. I had thought of demons as inhuman monsters or humans that would forsake me being human to gain power. Although this is true in many cases, the Archfiends are an exception. They are far more human than many of the people I have known before or after these events, and that includes those I am close to. In my previous post I said something like catching a glimpse of an Archfiend means death, but that's only if you piss them off. Honestly, that's pretty hard to do. But that doesn't mean I recommend it. They like studying how every human is different from one another. It must be nice for them to know that beings without uniform traits and habits exist. Arc beings are not alone in this, and neither are we. I spent the rest of that day getting to know the newcomers to our bunker. 
They all had such interesting stories to tell. Perhaps I could try to get one of them to post about what their worlds are like sometime. This wasn't your typical armed force. It was a family. A family I would need in the coming days. My actual family had gone into hiding to wait this out in another world. They were safe. Legion saw me staring into the monitor, displaying the rooftop camera's view, and watched with me. I was staring at the red clouds, which were now violently swirling, creating winds that devastated any building near them. Lower level demons scurried about, many fighting with each other over territory or food. As interesting as that was though, I couldn't keep my attention off of those clouds. Lightning began streaking in all directions from them. And eventually, a crimson portal opened within. Something was barely scratching the surface on the other side. But it was enough to notice. I looked at Legion for any explanation of what it was. And he said three words. Ragnarok has begun.